Uh, thank you very much. It's my pleasure to uh, talk a little bit about our recent work. Uh, my name is Guang Hao Liu uh, from Institute of Communication Engineering, NTHU. And the title of this talk is Beam Prediction for Mobile Users in Midwave Communications. Oh, well, so uh, think about it. when you drive on the road, uh, you would prefer to drive it like this, right? In a, in a, in a wide road so that you can uh, lastly encounter traffic jamming. So this is the same thing when you try, try to uh, enjoy high video quality on your mobile devices. Then you need high uh, data rate or high bandwidth. But in current 4G, uh, we have at most 20 megahertz bandwidth for each operator um, most of the time. And that will limit the, the highest data rate. So that gives us uh, the motivation to move to the higher band which is millimeter wave band that uh, will be focused in this talk, uh, where we have more than 200 gigahertz bandwidth. Um, so with this high bandwidth, it's possibly we can transmit in a high data rate. But uh, in such a high bandwidth, high uh, frequency band, uh, if you look at the millimeter wave signal, it is featured by very small wavelengths. According to the formula right here, the wavelength is uh, equal to the uh, speed of light divided by uh, the camera frequency, how fast you transmit your uh, signal over the certain uh, carrier. So um, what will happen with, uh, with a small wavelength, which is centimeter level in millimeter wave? Uh, so uh, another equation will show you the physics, uh, where the, it says that the receive power will be uh, proportional to the wavelength. Or in other words, when we uh, reduce, when we have a very small wavelength, then you expect that the receive power will be much lower than a high uh, a signal with a, a larger wavelength. So that means we need to compensate the loss due to uh, a small wavelength. And how we can do that? Um, one way is we can uh, use uh, antenna with direct directivity to enhance the uh, signal quality or the signal strength. So here in the figure, uh, I show you um, the, uh, uh, the signal pattern that you see from an antenna array, which means you have a, a, a few number of antenna elements. When you have like three times three, which is nine antenna elements, this is how uh, you can see from the radiation pattern, uh, where we call uh, beam pattern. Okay, uh, so um, if we double the number of ele antenna elements in each direction, we have horizontal and the vertical directions. Then um, you can see the beam will be beam width will be smaller. But uh, the gain is actually higher if you look at the number here, which is uh, the, uh, the strength of the uh, signal pattern. Uh, here we have 20 at most, and here we have only 10. Which means that by increasing the number of antennas, actually we can uh, enjoy more uh, gain from the antenna. Um, so once you have a uh, larger antenna, you can see uh, more compensation from the uh, transmit signal. But on the other hand, uh, it brings to the problem how you can make sure that the transmitter receiver have an eye-to-eye -eye contact, which means they, they will uh, uh, benefit most from the antenna gain. So here I show you a, a, a measurement pad, uh, a field test performed by Samsung in 2008 where uh, what shows here is uh, this is the time horizon and his, this is a received signal from uh, two different um, beam pattern. And so we have a red one and a, a, a blue one. Okay, if you focus on these two, you can see 
there's a transition at this point where the, the strongest one becomes um, the lower one. And now the, the blue one will take over. So this is the point that used to switch from one bin to the other so that it can make sure transmitter receiver can uh, benefit the highest antenna gain. So here, uh, let me explain a little bit about uh, what is the standard procedure used in today's mobile phone to perform uh, so-called beam alignment, to align the beam direction at the transmitter and receiver side. So it starts from, uh, the basic idea is uh, the transmitter receiver will try all the combination of the beams. So for example, the transmitter will start from um, sending some signals over some um, predefined patterns uh, with wider bandwidth, wider beam width, okay? And the receiver also will do the same. So the transmitter will try all the possible directions, receiver will do the same thing. And afterwards, receives, uh, receiver can um, tell which one, which direction that the transmitter should use in order to maximize the receiving signal power. So the uh, receiver will need to um, notify the transmitter that uh, the, the best one direction that transmitter should use. Afterwards, afterwards the uh, transmitter will fix this direction and now shrinking the beam width to a smaller one in order to, in, to gain a higher antenna gain. So uh, it's tried, the transmitter tried to divide this direction into several narrow beams with higher directional gain and the receiver uh, will use the best one in the previous stage to receive all the signals from different directions in the second stage. Now, um, afterwards, the receiver can define, de decide which is the best receiving direction that it should use, and also the transmitter will keep that for uh, later data transmission. So you can see, there's a lengthy procedure to make sure that transmitter receiver have the same idea about what the transmitter direction and the receiving direction will be used in the following data transmission. And also, it needs a certain feedback mechanism to complete the whole procedure. So we ask this question, um, when the mobile user moves, the transmitter or the base station will miss the best direction. So is it possible that uh, based on the past information, uh, we can add some intelligence at the, at, the, uh, at the base station to, to predict the next uh, optimal direction for transmitting and receiving? So, so our problem is, can we guess the next beam when the user moves along a certain uh, movement pattern? Okay, so uh, actually this is the same problem as we uh, collect a sequence of data. If we collect a sequence of data um, at the trans receiver side, then we'll see a sequential change of the output pattern. So if we can um, can analyze this pattern, we can possibly predict the future best answer. So this same problem as a uh, 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 time series forecasting in machine learning or statistical processing. So what is time series? It's a sequence of data points that occur in a certain order over some time period. Uh, best example is uh, we like to predict the stock price, uh, the, the population increase or decrease, and um, so this motivates us to treat the beam prediction problem as a time series forecasting problem, a very classic problem in uh, statistical processing. So commonly used prediction tools include uh, some uh, existing models, for example, autoregression, moving average, or the combination. And the neural network networks also are popular nowadays. So uh, in more details, um, if we have some input, for example, the receiver can collect the pilot signal received in a certain time window, 
And our hope is to get the best bin index for the future use. Then uh, what happened in between is uh, some uh, unknown uh, information happened in the, during the move, user movement. So is it possible that we can um, get some idea about the unknown information in the system or the system state? Because it's unknown, so it's a kind of a hidden state for the, for the user. So interestingly, actually, this problem can be cast into a, a differential equation. Um, we try to build a, a neural network to, to solve this problem, where the neural network ha have some parameters that will be trained for better accuracy. And what information we, we want to predict is the system state or the, uh, the best bin index at a certain time moment, the time of interest. And, and what we have is some initial information. For example, currently, what's the best bin that we, we, uh, we know beforehand? So how to solve this problem is actually the work that we build uh, in this project. And it's motivated by a, a framework called uh, ODE LSTM. It's a combination. It's a way to uh, predict, make predictions in continuous time. Since a lot of uh, details can be found in our, uh, in our paper published in archive and also uh, the WSNC conferences this year, so uh, I just go to the uh, results to convince you that this approach does work. So uh, we, we perform simulation where we place a base station over here, and user can move over these streets in a cross uh, uh, with inter intersection right here. And this, um, all these white blocks represent the buildings uh, across the streets. So uh, on this figure, uh, we, change, we increase the user velocity, the speed of user movement, from 5 to 30 meters meter per second. And we use the matrix uh, normalized beamforming gain, which is the ratio of the predicted beamforming gain over the ground truth, the best, the truly best uh, beamforming gain that can be achieved. So this is our uh, result of our uh, proposed method, which can maintain a relative high accuracy even when the user velocity get increased. And also compare with some other um, state of art approaches, for example, LSTM, the commonly used approach to make time series prediction. And ARMA is uh, a combination of auto regression and the moving average. And the last one is uh, comma filter, is then comma filter, a common tool for, uh, for tracking the user movement. Uh, so you can see here, um, our approach does work uh, even when users move at relative high speed. Um, so key takeaways, um, we show that the optimal beam can be predicted using the past information without any extra uh, engineering um, in the system. The proposed approach can achieve a relatively stable gain uh, even when users move in different speeds and we can save uh, a, a large amount of overhead for achieving beam alignment. And of course, there are some work, some problem we haven't addressed. For example, um, in reality, the patient will take care of multiple users, each with different moving speeds and directions and the trajectories. So is that possible we can train or learn uh, from the past information using a unified model? That's the question we need to address. Uh, for more information, we can reproduce our work uh, from the code that we, we uh, are available on GitHub. Also, our paper are available to download. Uh, thank you for, for, for listening. I'll be happy to take questions from here. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any questions from the audience? It's actually hard to take care of uh, pointers <laughs> and <the> cameramen <laughs> and uh, also the screen right here. Yeah. So I know this is a practice. So um, 
Sorry for, for not being uh, wonderful this time. Yo, yo, mes ma. Wait. Thank you very much for your uh, presentation. It's very interesting. Then I'm wondering the the differential equation you're going to solve. What, yes. What S stands for? That must be transparent to the transmitter and the receiver. Then it's okay. like a, do they have the they share the same what what is S? S T. S of T, yes. Um, well, why, why do you need convolutional networks? Yes. Is, it, um, is that hard to define? Define this, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay. Thanks. Um, let, let me use this figure to try to explain the, the question okay. here. So, this is what we have the information we have the pipe receive pipe signal. And this answer, this uh, goal wants to achieve, want to guess what's the odds by being in the future. Okay, so uh, the connection in between the input and output will be uh, governed, will be determined by the state, which is unknown, it's not measurable. The system state is that the input will be so that that must be transparent to the input and output. Otherwise, how do they know uh, to adapt their beam? Just to come out and we stop. Just in the transmitter, they mean the antenna ultimately also. Receiver that he is getting paid to him. No, it must be he. So ST must be transparent to both, so that they they can call. You mean transparent? Uh, 就是就是 no no 就是对两边嘛，要要他们。呃，问题是这个事情就是不知道嘛。这样不知道，所以我们不知道这个，我不知道用户是要往什么方向移动，对吧？然后用什么速度移动，这些都是我们不知道的资讯，全部都塞在这个所谓的 hidden state 里面。这个是我们量测不到的。不，这个，那接收的历史呢 ？Clear。是因为 even 在这个呃这个 machine learning， 你说你用什么 enhance 的各种的 machine learning， 你总是 state definition 要清楚，它代表 what does it stand for？ 但我们比较好追踪。你说通通不知道不知道，但是它什么物是是这样在？呃，我们这个是知道，这个是我们想要转开。这中间发生的是，因为不知道怎么描述出来，所以才会用 machine learning。对，因为这中间的事情太有 channel 的影响，变有变成你的这个 environment， 变成是你所谓的 system dynamic。对，这个这个 environment 里面的 definition 不是够清楚。我我感觉上是这样，因为比如说你你的 machine learning 你也要对环境有一个了解，是你你比较好定义所有的 state 是什么东西。对，我我很难听出来那个 state 这边定义。呃， state 就是你，你首现在我们面对这个是呃 mobility 的一个情境。这个情境，这个 environment， if, if it is an, it represents the radar target the velocity， then I understand. But here I don't understand. Sorry, this is my confusion. Okay. Um. <laughs> you mean there's no uh, formula or close form or no, wording? No, that's a good question. Yeah. Because of, like you're tracking some target, yes. and some target that like the radar target that moving, yes. and velocity, you know, you you can sense that signal, you know how the velocity is changing, but velocity is transparent to both sides, then they know of the change, then I can. Uh, adjust the beam form in directions. Yeah, oh. I think that's the the, the key uh, of prediction. Uh, prediction means you are not aware of what will happen in the right, future. Right, right. But the, the it's definition. different from channel estimation or tracking. Right. Based on something you know, 
you but, can but, but estimate the future. Then you need to have a dynamic system you define. Yes, for sure. Oh, you, you have? We somehow. have, we have. We have the, the uh, definition. system model and uh, the definition of the states. Okay. Uh, here, I briefly explain, it includes a lot of things that okay. is not measurable. Okay. I see. Uh, something <laughs> because the time is very limited, that you are not able to print. Uh, well, yeah, thank you. Thank you. That's the that's the definition okay. here. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, if I want to put more details here, then it will take a, a, a yeah, several yeah. pages. Okay. So. Thanks. But uh, briefly, this uh, collection of all the unknown information. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So, so I was wondering, um, here, uh, I guess you have to um, train a model for a different environment yeah. setting. Um, so how about the user behavior? Um, like how, how do you generate a different mobility pattern? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, like if they take a turn or, you know, yes. how, how would that affect your, um, your prediction? Um, it's not possible to simulate the user movement for every speed and direction. So, um, what we can do is, we can try a, a, a certain uh, scenarios. We train the model in certain scenarios. Each scenario has its own speed and uh, moving pattern. And then you let the, the machine learning model to learn this finite uh, sets of scenarios. Uh, for example, you try the uh, model with user mobility speed at 5 meters per second and uh, uh, 100 meters per second, for example. Then uh, you want the model to be able to predict, make predictions at speed of, for example, 30 meters per second. That's the, the challenge. Uh, because you have finite set of data. So what we did here is we actually trained the model uh, with a certain predefined scenario. And uh, um, in between these uh, scenarios, uh, the, uh, the not test this scenario, uh, the, the model can still make prediction with lower uh, prediction accuracy than the case that the model really have the data set with, uh, for example, 30 minutes per second. So uh, that's a general uh, bottleneck in machine learning. Unless you have a super learning that can interact with the environment, for example, uh, 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 reinforced learning. So, uh, because, because this is supervised learning. So the output of your network uh, network here is the optimal beam, right? Yes. Um, so do you get an estimate of the state as a byproduct, or is it like hidden? Um, uh, we don't need to get, uh, know exactly what the state is, because all that will be uh, learned from the model itself. Uh, we only care about what's the model output. Yeah. Because those unknown information or hidden states are not measurable, so there's no way you can know exactly. That's the question raised by Professor J as well. What, what's the exactly is the state? It's unknown dynamics in the, in our problem. All right, thank you. Do we have any other questions? Uh, so if not, let's uh, thank Professor Zhu. So uh, thank you all for uh, attending this first uh, of the our seminar series, and um, you know I believe we learned a lot from the two exciting talks today. So uh, afterwards we have a, a pizza gathering, uh, so we can you know chat some more or you know talk to the speakers um, if you want. All right, thank you.